The Artemis II crew represents thousands of people working tirelessly to bring us to the stars. This is their crew. This is our crew. This is humanity's crew. May I introduce them to you all? She's an engineer who got her start at Goddard and is no stranger to breaking records, logging the longest continuous space flight ever by a woman, your mission specialist, Christina Hammett Koch. He is a Master of Science in Physics, an F-18 pilot, and a Canadian astronaut. Your mission specialist, Jeremy Hansen. He's a naval aviator and test pilot that's flown over 40 different aircraft, most recently the first operational commercial crew mission. Your Artemis II pilot, Victor Glover. He's a decorated naval aviator, test pilot, and leader of the highest character, your Artemis II commander, Reed Wiseman. Ladies and gentlemen, your Artemis II crew.
All right. Thank you, Administrator Nelson. And the hard part's over now, right? Yes, sir. All right. Good. Well, Reed, Victor, Christina, and Jeremy, I am so proud to have you four standing here in this moment. You are the right crew for this mission. You are the future of Artemis, and it looks bright with you at the controls. As head of flight operations, I have the privilege of getting to know each and every astronaut. The best part of my job, the best part of my job, is that I'm surrounded by people who inspire, who give hope to those that might follow in their footsteps. Christina, with a work ethic and willingness to lend a hand that only someone who spent their summers working on a farm growing up can have, your relentless drive is unmatched. You have already made your mark in the remote corners of our planet. You have already been in the history books as a record-setting astronaut. You're a trailblazer and a role model for every generation to come. You've already been advocating and uplifting children in your community, and I know that you are just getting started. And as the only professional engineer in the crew, I, <laughs> I know who Mission Control will be calling on when it's time to fix something on board. So uh, we appreciate you. Victor, you wanted to be a hundred different things when you grew up. But I can say I'm truly thankful you ended up as a Navy pilot and an astronaut. Like so many, seeing other astronauts take flight planted the seed. And when you heard Pam Melroy speak at a test pilot conference, that was the moment you decided to apply. So Pam, thank you for inspiring others. Victor, you were the first person in your family to graduate from college. And you always talk about how much of the love and support of those around you made your dreams possible. I can honestly say I have never met anyone as determined as you are to spread that same love and support until everyone who passes into your orbit is better for it. You overcame every obstacle that came your way every obstacle, and then you dedicated your life to crushing those obstacles so that future generations can dream in a space unbounded. So thanks, Victor. And finally, read and explore from the beginning. The forest of your youth might be smaller than the frontier that you're heading for now, but this was always you. It's what you were meant to be. You said for a time you wanted to be a train engineer, but I don't think trains go quite as fast as you need them to, so. <laughs> I wish the read of your youth, the ones that, you know, that you're dealing with bullies, dealing with the uncertainties of growing up could meet you now. Meet the Reed who took his first jet for a spin and knew he was meant to soar across the skies. The Reed who found a home and family in the Navy and here at NASA. The Reed who led our astronauts into a new era of space exploration. And the Reed who will lead Artemis II from the Earth to the Moon and safely back home again. All of you will lead us into this brave new frontier. You are the Artemis generation. We are the Artemis generation. And with that, I will hand it back over to our neighbors to the north to talk about Jeremy, who will take his own place in history.
Well, Jeremy, I'm not going to talk about your early life or your lovely family. I'm not going to talk about your military service and everything you did as a fighter pilot, an F-18 fighter pilot. I'm not even going to talk about what you did as an astronaut and being the first Canadian to go on a lunar mission. I'm going to talk about your humanity and share with the world a story when I was with you at the Kennedy Space Center and I saw the power of the blue suit where we had hundreds of people storming to Jeremy. But Jeremy did one thing. He talked to each and every one. You took the time to talk to all the school children who were there. The Artemis generation and they are here today and watching us. You took the time to inspire them. You took the time to thank all the teachers who are there to support our kids and, and teach them STEM skills that will bring them in exploration and being the future astronauts. You took the time to talk to each and every family that were coming from around the world and across North America. What I want to celebrate to you is your humanity. The fact that you have been inspiring not only us today, but keep inspiring humanity. To you, Jeremy, go Canada. Thank you, everyone.